Dog Gadgets. Live! Can we hear you? Hello? There we go. Hi, I'm Josh from Brown Dog Gadgets. Today, oh, browndoggadgets.com. Look at this. So useful. I'm here with uh, Pete, our producer yeah, Pete, over to this side. Over here. Uh, he, we're hanging out here, still in our hallway. Uh, because our live streaming studio is nearly finished. We're expanding our offices, and which is nearly done. I just opened up the big plastic thing I can see down the hallway here. Uh, and they're vacuuming because the, the, they're cleaning up in the background. So apologies. But anywho, long story short, we're going to show a couple cool microbit projects off today and a couple other fun things. Um, oh, also, uh, so many weird things happening. Uh, Halloween's around the corner. Before I forget, uh, if you like to do fun paper circuits projects, we've got heaps, and I mean heaps, of different paper circuits projects and activities for free, which is a little over what cast there, uh, on our website under paper circuits, things that move, things that shake, fun stuff, free templates. So if you have paper circuits materials already, who cares? Uh, use use our stuff with uh, our uh, templates with your stuff. Yay. But Chompers is on Oh, Mr. There. Chompers, who is actually, we have one right here, which is a vibrating, we made this the other day in a live stream with one of our resellers. Our oh, yeah. He just has all the graphics up from the other day. Yes. We did a different live stream. Uh, but, uh, yeah, this is a little chomping teeth guy. It's a paper craft project. Um, oh, yeah, it's cut and fold. But, anyway, these templates and far, far more are on our website at browndoggadgets.com. If you, if you like what you see here, please follow us on one of our many social media links. Look at Pete. On, he's Johnny on the spot with, uh, with the links. Pew, pew, pew. Um, I got something, though. Guess what? Guess what, Pete? I think we should show this. Oh, yes. That's, that's uh, your name. That's me. I'm Josh. <laughs> so uh, Hackspace Magazine uh, is a publication. You can buy a physical format of one, or you can download a free PDF. Uh, there's actually a surprisingly long interview uh, with me. So I talked to the interviewer for like an hour one day about education stuff, like, oh, we're Josh Shadden. And they apparently put verbatim the entire thing, <laughs> everything I said, uh, which is fine because it's yay. But if you want to know way too much about the education and the STEM market and all that fun jazz, um, yeah, it's just basically like, hey, we make some cool lesson plans. We do some fun stuff. The market's weird right now. Yeah. Um, but how we kind of got into this as an educator. But there's a picture of Wally. There's a couple of really nice pictures of Lego projects. <laughs> you can't see any of our stuff on them. <laughs> but they took some photos off our website of the Lego stuff we did. But actually, that's a great photo by Pete. Yeah. Uh, that's one of our, uh, our Crazy Circuits bit boards that we have, which is our Kickstarter campaign. Kickstarter. Still going on for the next oh. 19 hours. It's uh, it's our Lego to microbit adapter thing, which you're going to actually use in these projects we're showing off today. That's still going on in Kickstarter for 19 more hours or 18. Oh, oh there it is. Oh, look at that. What do we got? Uh, so yeah. you can save up to 40% by, by doing, doing that with us. Yeah. Uh, we can also pre-order off our website if you want more shipping options, but yeah. we're way past our goal. Our goal was $2,000. It was 18519 <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe we'll get to 20, because then we have another stretch goal I have to. I, I said, like, oh, I hit 20, we'll do this. I'm like, oh, all right. Well, somebody was smart and actually backed our stuff. But anyway, uh, on that fun note, we're going to talk about a couple microbit projects today that Pete has posted up on our website. And uh, some of the stuff we're still putting together as part of our microbit curriculum we're putting out there. Uh, but here, let's switch to the overhead camera. Overhead. Wah. Good times. So, microbit. It's pretty robust. It's way more robust than you initially think out of the box. And if you use one of the many, many microbit adapters like our Crazy Circuits Bitboard, you'll probably have a bunch of pin headers on the backside, just little pins to plug in external items, such as a very handy dandy distance sensor and a seven segment display, which isn't showing up super well on the camera, but is super, <laughs> it's easy to read in person. This it's is better than an angle, actually, I think. There we go. Can, yeah, yeah it's just the lighting. Um, the, Pete has some good photos and video. It looks really good. These are two very inexpensive little sensors you can pick up for three to four dollars each on Amazon if you want to purchase them and you just plug right into the micro bit. And the cool thing is if you're using something like MS make code, which everyone uses for doing their drag and drop interface, there's already people written um, all the like extra code and resources you need to just import those settings into there through make code um, and just use extensions. them. Extensions. Are they extensions? Is that what they're called? They're called extensions oh, at good, this I said point. And, and in our, Josh, our new uh, guide, we show you, you don't have to add the extension if you use our code because it'll automatically do it, but we show you how to add them. Yep. So you know, walk through the steps. You do a click for extensions. You type in the name and you just add it in. It's pretty easy. And these are really common. Like even I, as somebody who hadn't used a microbit very much, went on and said, like, okay, well, here's the name of this seven-segment display. 
I found someone who did an extension, and within a minute or two, I was showing temperature on here yeah. and showing, like, different just the built-in data sensors on the microbit, accelerometer data. Like, oh, that was really easy. Drag, yeah. drop, drag, drop. That seems too easy. And it was. But here, one of the fun projects I like to do, uh, especially at workshops with teachers, is using a distance sensor and a seven-second display to show data. And that's pretty darn handy. And Pete added one like, – some I did like, ah, blah, I'm losing my mind. Uh, went one step further and added a, a little green LED here. And Pete, what is that green LED doing as I move my hand closer? So there's a – in the code, there's an if-then statement. It checks if, uh, if the number is less than 10 and more than 1. Um, and then it'll turn on that LED. So we found that, and we found also that sometimes the sensor would uh, output a zero. Mm. So we didn't want to do just check under 10 because you might get a zero. And so we added that. And it also lets you change that to say anything from like 20 to 30 or 50 to 80, whatever. So it kind of gives you that that starting point of how to adjust that and add into it. And this is really handy because you're probably thinking, well, what do I care about that? Uh, well, a couple of easy projects that people have been doing with projects. this. Projects. This guy's got a question about a project. I should, ben, this is literally a suggestion I had to Ben the other day. He stopped by our shop to uh, to chat with us, and Mr. Nelson here has raccoons on his porch. He's like, "How do I, I got raccoons coming along the porch? What do I do?" Stop well, putting peanuts on your porch, Ben. Well, Ben puts a lot of things on his porch. <laughs> it's just you know, food scraps, entire roasts, a ham. Once came there, like, is a roast ham? I'm like, oh. why? He's like, "That's what hams do oh, best yeah. out on the porch." Yeah. Uh, but you could use this to, say, do a little, like, a blinking LED. Yeah. Um, I'll put a sound effect, say Halloween. You put this plus a, a little piezo speaker to do a little sound effect. Or we've often used a uh, MP3 player module. Again, a, a very inexpensive thing. We use that in a couple of our, like, our HAL 9000 project, our sound wall behind me here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if somebody comes within, you know, between 1 and 10 centimeters that plays that MP3 file, do a spooky sound effect. Maybe you want to have it a certain distance activate a big vibrating motor to make something shake next to you or a lighting effect. So there's a lot of things you can trigger with that. Um, or the go-to thing is you want to know how far your car is from the wall of your garage door. Put this setup up there with an LED that starts blinking when you hit that right spot where your car is, you know, close enough, but you haven't hit the wall. It beats the old, uh, what is it, tennis, tennis ball, ball on a string. A string yeah. Oh, yeah. But I've seen some people do some really cool projects with this where they also use, like, NeoPixel rings or yeah. multiple LEDs. So... Um, when you're you know, five feet away, it's one LED. When you're three feet or four feet away, it's two. And it, more, 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 more. Then they all start blinking when you get to like that sweet spot. So it kind of gives you a little indicator. Um, the one I saw with the NeoPixel ring, where it, the ring like went around, you know, kept getting more and more full as you got closer and closer to the to your sweet spot in your garage, and then started flashing when you hit that sweet spot. So it was really handy and pretty cool. It puts on a jack o' lantern, yeah. so there's a lot of really cool things. Especially Halloween's a great time for those, like silly one-off projects. You want to make something vibrate, like our chomping teeth here. If you hooked up, the, hooked up that vibrating motor to the built-in relay on our bit board, that's right, our bit board has a built-in relay. You could trigger that motor to go off, and your chomping teeth starts vibrating around when somebody gets to a certain point. Um, and that's a really easy project. And just in general, that distance display is a really easy thing for kids to understand because this is uh, basically it's sonar. It's an ultra, ultrasonic uh, distance sensor. So one of these is a sound output. One's a sound receiver. It's ultrasonic. We can't hear it because we're not dogs or bats. Uh, and my dog doesn't hear this either. So it's mm. something above his reading. But I think some, some uh, really cruddy cameras, like certain camera varieties, will pick up like, like a weird background sound from these. The wow. microphone. Yeah. Uh, as I've seen from watching too many videos on this. But you could do so many different things with this ultrasonic sensor and if-then statements. If then you're 5 to 10 centimeters away, play note A. If you're 10 to 15, play note B, and so on and so forth. So you can make a musical player, which is one of the projects we have on our list of projects to write up, where it's just a bunch of if-thens. If you're a cer certain uh, distance away, play this note, this note, this note. Now you've got yourself a musical theremin. You can just go, you know, happy birthday like that. Um, I have a suggestion for Ben. Oh, Nelson. What about yeah, so for the Nelson? We, we got the relay, so we could turn on something like a DC motor to, to spin around. And then, you know, Ben, you just attach a, a blade or something or a machete or a knife, whatever, and then put that on the porch. And then they get too close, it just spins around, and I don't know what happens next. Or you could say activate a, a camera or something, maybe. I, I guess a camera, sure. Uh, I don't, I don't think Ben wants to gonna... kill his raccoons. Oh, I think he actually well, like wants to like take a picture or something. Oh, he said detect raccoons. It's a raccoon I detector. Said deflect. Okay. Deflector screen. That's like <laughs> danger, danger, raccoons. Also, I know 
Ben's here. We've got our old pal uh, John Chavone Jr. Jr. He's still around. He's here. Check you're alive. Today. Yeah. I'm glad to hear. You're yeah. still you're still with us, John. Yeah. But the, the Microbit's a great platform, and if you're not somebody who wants to do stuff with, say, the Arduino platform, grabbing like one, either ours or one of the many, many Microbit adapters out there that lets you plug in other things, lets you use a lot of these very simple, very common sensors in a format that's pretty simple to use as a project. Um, and the only downside is compared to like a very cheap Arduino Nano, which is what less than five dollars yeah. paid on Amazon. Yeah. And you spend a bit more, but if you're doing like some one-off projects, like a couple pumpkin things a year, or, or a couple of holiday, Christmas, Hanukkah projects, you name it, you can do some fun stuff with it. And honestly, plugging these things in is just it's just plug. They already have little pin headers. Now people are asking, hey Josh, how are you thinking you connecting these wonderful sensors to the Lego environment? Well. Pete has done a really great job of using a couple of rubber bands to hold them onto our Legos. Yeah. Uh, now, Pete, would you go grab that from the other room? You have your—he's th- a 3D printed adapter. Oh, sure. uh, Pete does some 3D printing uh, design work, and he's uh, done some nice little Lego adapters for some of these sensors. So, if you have a 3D printer, we're going to be releasing those. And again, Thingiverse.com, we've said this before, has some different basic little um, adapters out there. People have made it ages ago for like, especially the distance yeah, sensor. Awesome. There you go. I saw it there earlier. Um, uh, but this is just like a simple slot for the distance sensor to plug into with your Lego receptors on the bottom. The rubber band approach also works surprisingly well. You can also make your own Lego one, but yeah. we're trying to make some very, very easy, very simple designs. Like this is about as simple as you can get for uh, 3D printed objects. Just so if you have a 3D printer around, you can do that and everyone's happy especially if you're a classroom teacher, you use a bunch of these, and you know, you got a 3D printer. Look, principal, look, administrator, I used my 3D printer to make something for my classroom. Useful just, thing. Just not Useful like thing. printing a bunch of Yoda's. frogs and Yodas, yeah. Josh, we lo- we love, love 3D printers. For, so you mentioned, uh, oh. you know, the, the, if you have an Arduino. So I know a couple I know a couple adult friends of my own kids, and they're like, ah, you know, I bought the Arduino kit, and I just, ah, I never really got into it. Those are the people that took my class, typically. Um, I would say if you have an Arduino kit and it came with a bunch of sensors and stuff, just get the micro bit because you can probably use most of those things, you know, with it and maybe give it to your, your kids if you never got into the Arduino stuff and they can get going right away. And, and the thing is too, uh, P when I time about this yesterday, uh, the micro bit's just turning five years old. Yeah. You see this in 2015. So it's a fairly young programming platform. Mm-hmm. It's also designed for a younger audience too, specifically for younger students and beginners. Um, not, not to say that it doesn't have a lot of nice built-in handy, really great features on it, which it does. Um, but it is a different market where the Arduino has been out for more than 10 years. And it was kind of like the go-to one for quite a long time. Um, still is it, it's, I call it the cockroach of microcontrollers because it's everywhere. Yeah. Like for the longest time, even 3d printers at their, at their core had an Arduino going between the computer and the stepper yeah. motors. So crack open a lot of early 3d printers. There's an Arduino Uno on the on the inside. Okay, well, sure. Crack open. They were stuck right on that. <laughs> it's true. Some of them were just like little sticky tape, like <laughs> um, before everyone moved to doing their own custom controllers yeah. and especially people going wireless. But um, but it's just it's kind of a newer platform. But people have done a lot of great open source work of how to adapt these sensors and whatnot. Like us, we're posting all of our directions and guides on our website for free. So if you're a teacher somewhere, say like out in New Zealand or Australia, and like, hey, I want to do these things, but I don't want to buy your stuff, Josh, because you look a little shady over there on stateside. I know. They're like, no Northern Hemisphere stuff, only Southern Hemisphere. That's where the that's where the cool kids are, um, I suppose. Uh, you can still follow our directions and guides, and you can use other things to hook this up. Because then we try to make sure all of our stuff's out there for everyone to look and evaluate for free. Like in a, I talked about in that Hackspace article, or <laughs> for so long, our lesson plans and directions are always free. <laughs> I, former teacher and me, I hate putting things behind a paywall. It's a jerk move. On that fun note, we're going to show another cool project uh, as well here that we I think we showed a little while back. Ben has one more comment. Ugh. Papercraft raccoon face. Ooh. <laughs> Oh, so there'd be so we a couple of weeks ago we posted a project where it was a distance sensor and a servo that kicked out like a little ghost from behind a door. Yeah. And with um which just kind of a fun project, get too close, like, oh there's a ghost. <laughs> Ben's literally talking about doing that project, but with like blinking eyes on it, like little blinking LEDs, yeah. which would be like, ah, there's a raccoon, because when you have trying to light outside, their eyes kinda glow red at yeah. night. Because it looks a little freaky. Um we get lots of Say, I saw some very big raccoons go into a sewer the other evening when I came back to the office to get something. I'm like, some big raccoons into the sewer system. Those were rats. No, no. 
I've seen rats <laughs> when I went to New York Maker Fair. I live in Milwaukee. It's true. I, <laughs> yeah, you live like a block into Milwaukee officially. Um, no, no, it's more than that. Okay, three blocks. Just far enough that people won't deliver things to you in your house. Because, oh, no, you're too far in Milwaukee. He's like, I'm like three blocks in from, like, the other suburb. So this is a xylophone. This xylophone cost us a grand total of $6 U.S. Six. $6. That's all it was? It is the cheapest wow. xylophone you can buy. Yeah, with two mallets as well. I I'm know. I'm going to reuse one of them. Yes, we are. We actually also have a much nicer xylophone. It's so nice that they actually call it a glockenspiel. Yeah. Because it actually has – it's much, much nicer. The adult version of a xylophone. <laughs> You can find like a dozen different companies selling this exact same one. Gosh, Glockenspiel is a, a foreign word. You know what it what it means? What? I don't know. Oh my! I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not a German speaking person. Maybe Helen. We got what? What is it, Pete? Guess what? I don't know. I don't know what it is. We should ask Helen. She uh, yeah. she lives in Berlin. She, she would know. Maybe Drew could tell us. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we have one of our uh, Crazy Circus bit boards down here. Uh, we've got a bunch of little tiny push buttons. Uh, we've got two of our Lego servos with a Lego piece here connecting the two together. And Pete has just used some gaffer's tape, which is a fabric-based tape. A whole guide on this. Oh, yes, there is a full guide um, uh, to play music on here. Because there's two ways of doing this. Either one, you use your push buttons to play out a song because you're too lazy to, yeah. to do it. got the George Jetson approach. Where, like, got push mobility some. issues. You so risk <sighs> from all the typing. Ah, I can't, you know. Who knows? Pete's carpal tunnel syndrome tennis, is just horrific. You know, racquetball. Tennis elbow? Well, you got a lot yeah. of tennis elbow? From... I did have that last year, two years ago. Yeah. Okay. Well, or you can press a note and you can actually program <laughs> to play music. Because the big thing is you just have to figure out what degree your servo is at uh, to figure out what each of their notes are. For this project, so Pete has a, a little chart he's written out uh, for this particular setup right here that says, you know, 35 degrees is this note. You know, 45 is this note and so on and so forth. So when he wants to say play note A, he uses this um, yeah. a certain number value. And we have to redo that, of course, for the bigger glockenspiel, because we'll be using... Um, Bell set. There, see, I'm glad Nelson is here. Thanks, Ben Nelson. He's one of the two, our two favorite live streaming Nelsons this week, because we had a different <laughs> Nelson the other day. Good one. Uh, sorry, we have other Nelsons, Ben, we <laughs> talked to. Uh, also in Wisconsin. Yeah. Uh, but no, you, we have to redo the, uh, the chart, because... We're using a much bigger, bigger xylophone. And we're going to use two different sets of these as well because it's such a large three. reach on it. Oh, three? <laughs> we actually might, since uh, Microbit can only handle so many servos well, we might end up doing that with, I think, a robotics board. Yeah. Um, just because we can then cover the entire range of this thing and the sharps and the flats as well. So it can do some really, really nice music. Yeah. So we're going to plug this puppy in and um, go. Gosh, it's not a puppy. So. Wish it was a puppy. <laughs> Um, so let's just let's manually do some glockenspieling. <laughs> let's get pull the board out. Oh, thank goodness! That's not totally tuned. It is a horrible sounding little guy. <laughs> try try the secret song. See what we got loaded. Is it this button, Pete? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So far, it's coming. One more time for the people in the back. Yeah. That's the melody to Funky Town. Yeah. All right. By Lips, Lips Inc. Lips Inc. It mentions that in the instructions we have. <laughs> from, 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 get to so, so if you're a teacher out there who has one of our classroom <laughs> sets or wants to do this with a anything from Arduino to our microbit setup or whatnot, I just use two regular servos. We use our Lego-based servos because... We have a ton of them, and they're really easy to use and build something with. You know, besides our gaffer's tape on, we got a little piece of Lego coming off of here, and a ga some gaffer's tape. Um, it's surprisingly easy to put together. It really, really is. And if you've got some students who want to build something a little weird and a little funky, have them build this, and of course, program their own songs on there. So you want to have like, you know, I, whatever, whatever popular music. I don't know what popular music is this day because I'm old now. Uh, but uh, have them program some songs in there by hand. And they're doing that work of figuring out the angles of everything, which, yay. And then once they have that in place, they can do it. And same thing with these push buttons. These push buttons say just, you know, go to angle 35 and then hit. There you go. Maybe get a slightly better one of these. Um, maybe raid one from your music department. I'm sure there's yeah. somebody has one. But have them. Yeah. 
Now, Jeff, Funky Jeff Town. before Ben even asked, what if we what if we connected the distance sensor up to that to play it? You could totally do that as we well. That. And that's the fun part about that distance sensor. Instead of doing a push button, you go five to ten centimeters is this. Yeah. You know, fifteen to twenty is this. Yeah. Thirty to thirty-five is this. There you go. You can just have your hand then drop. Yeah, and yeah. What you could do is then, too, you could have a piece of cardboard or something that you've laid out, like, the marker points, too, so you're just not guessing. Um, you can actually do lay it. Do the karate chop thing. And song. it would, seriously, just as easy as doing the push buttons. Uh, but, again, you're combining a couple different things together to do some funky things that are different. Um, you want to go, like, Spooky Halloween? You have it play a Spooky Halloween song ooh. when somebody activates the distance. Like, ooh, there's a spooky xylophone playing itself. Just put something funky in front of here. So like, ah, oh, it's a playing itself. Put like a little little skeleton hand over here. The xylophone. Ooh, spooky. Halloween's the best for maker projects because it's just anything, any like generic project. Put a skeleton or a bat on it. Something that's a spooky project. Ooh. Got it. Got a pumpkin. Light it up with LEDs. Oh, that guy. Look at that. He's a skeleton. Did thing. you did you just find that on Google right now? <laughs> Or did you maybe, have that queued up? Maybe I just found it. I don't know. Because I was thinking, like... That, that, playing the bones, I think. So, like, this is, like, a standard, like, bad horror movie trope. <laughs> I think, like, the movie Army of Darkness has somebody, like, playing, like, a bone xylophone at one point. Um, if you're a fan of Bruce Campbell, yeah, there's this a, is any reason to rewatch it now. There's too many to even show you. Uh, a Bruce Campbell? Pictures no, of him? Because like that man... Skeleton the, xylophone. Got the chin. But, I mean, of it's kind of a staple of, like, especially yeah. cartoons, too. The bone xylophones. Yep, see, there you go. And you could just, there's so many things you could do with this because it's yeah. so simple and silly. Now, you want to get even more fancy, if you want to get super fancy, get a bunch of bells. You get, like, those hanging bells, Ooh. and you could just have your server, like, smack each of those little bells and be really fancy, high-end, for especially Christmas. We want to do the opposite of Halloween and be, like, super joyful and pretty. Right. And silver bells. Now, Josh, you said simple and silly, but, uh, again, these are all a great foundation of which... To build on, you can do uh -huh. things like again angles and math and and notes and reading music and and deciphering that and translating it to what you need to play it. You've combined both music and your STEM activity together, and yeah. every good principal or administrator at your school is always happy when you bring two disciplines, two right. different areas together. Uh, they are just like, ooh, if we could give you a raise, we would, but we can't because we're schools. Um, <laughs> I used to be a teacher, <laughs> used to. Uh, but no, like stuff like this is a really great way of, of bringing in multiple disciplines. Yeah. They're doing all the work. Like everything here is pretty straightforward when it comes to physically building it. That's the nice part. A um, couple of Legos, a couple of servos, some conductive tape. There's nothing that hard physically on the build, which is why we use Legos. Um, even this, the tape aspect on here, not tough at all to what wire up the, the tape. Hashtag maker tape. <laughs> Copper foil, won't cut it. Maker tape. That's where the fun's at. Oh, uh, that should be your saying. Maker tape. That's where the fun's at. Wow. Spend a lot more money and uh, trademark that, too. Because <laughs> you want to spend money on something, get a trademark. Ben has some... He find, ben Steam. Says, Steam. Now, at the end of... After the M, he used an exclamation point instead of a period. I mean... If only had, like, a upside-down exclamation point at the front... <laughs> be, I don't know. Steam. Uh, you know who isn't a fan of Bruce Campbell, Ben Nelson? Oh. Sad people. That's <laughs> okay. why. All right. Not to talk about well, Bru uh, Bruce Campbell too much because mm, right, it's a right. national treasure. Yeah. From Detroit, Michigan. Or yeah. the suburbs of Detroit. Anyway, moving on. Um, <laughs> oh, of course. But yeah, so this is a project we highly recommend for doing with uh, really kids who are looking for something different to do. Granted, this is a in-person kind of classroom activity. You can't really do this remotely with kids with the materials involved. Sorry, people teaching remotely. I know it's a rough time, yeah. even with the distance sensor as well. But uh, once you have kids coming back in, this is a good project to just have them sit down and make, uh, especially once they've done a few like basic micro bit things. They know how the, our conductive tape works. They know how to wire things up by plugging your servo in and whatnot, have a basic understanding. This is not tough to get kids to, to put this together. The only downside of a project like this, by the way, though, is... The noise, because it's hard to do. A... One of my big classroom pet peeves are things that make a lot of noise because I've been there before. Like, oh, it'd be fun. Well, I'll do a noisemaker project. Then you have like 10 groups of kids doing noisemakers at a very high level in your classroom. You're like, Ugh. Josh, you know, I think would be cool is if this were in a classroom setting, 
um, students or groups each get their own micro bit, which they can program, but then they have to come over and plug it in and see if it worked. There you go. Yeah. That's actually that's something we've recommended in the past, too, yeah. where you have, like, one central setup um, like this, and everyone has their own micro bit. Yeah, they just come back and forth, plop that puppy in there, yeah. give it a try, and, like, oh, it doesn't quite work. Well, let's go modify it. So then yeah. you limit the amount of sound in a classroom. But also, too, if you want to, don't want to give everybody a xylophone and the setup and just really cut down the amount of the physical build time. Yeah. It does remove a big chunk of the, the the work from it. Again, depending on your classroom and your management and the time involved. So, when, And once classes are back in, you just use that distance sensor to get the part in. Which is a, a project we put together a while back, <laughs> Pete. Do you remember that? It was like March or April, it's like, yes. like we made like a little wearable distance sensor thing that you could wear around your neck and it told you like a little alarm when people got too close. Um, True. Some jokes in there about kids at a school dance too, but this is a classy, classy live stream. We've only <laughs> cursed a few times on it. And check this out. It hasn't gone down since we started. So <laughs> Yes, our Kickstarter campaign, we're like, oh, yeah, it's gone up. And it goes down as people like cancel pledges at the end of a campaign. 18 hours left to go, Pete. Yeah. Uh, should, we, should we do like a countdown tomorrow? Sure. Like a, a like segment display. <laughs> oh, we totally could. <laughs> Like we do like a Kickstarter countdown, like a, yeah. a pledge-a-thon. Here's the thing, too. We're going to have like uh, pre-orders open on our website, too, afterwards yeah. for a couple weeks because I'll get around to changing those prices later. But, Josh, we're going to stay here on the air nonstop until it ends, right? Until we get hours. all the – it's just very <laughs> helpful for us. To, and I say our goal is $2,000, so being at like eighteen five is really nice yep. um, because we just spend uh, – yes, Steam. Steam. Wow. Put it just, Ben's just going to live in the corner of our screen now because he's not here right now, which he usually is. Uh, but no, uh, helping us back this Kickstarter campaign, and I know a lot of people are like, why are you an established company? Why are you doing this? Um, it helps us um, cover the manufacturing cost and the design cost because there were, well, there's four of us here in the shop that work full time. We have had Ben Nelson up in the corner there, actually, is our, our, our every now and then video production guy. He comes in and does some like the high end video work. And so Ben was here for several days. He's a freelance video production guy, a lot of corporate events. And we're a corporation, so yay. Uh, <laughs> totally fit into his wheelhouse. But he came in. We've had a couple remote people who do project write-ups for us, PCB design work, manufacturing, test runs, all that fun stuff that goes into this, not to mention we able to purchase everything up ahead of time. So um, backing our campaign literally pays for like nine different people who have worked on this to some degree or another in a significant amount. So even our PCB design work, I mean, it, it wasn't gigantic, the amount of PCB work we had, but uh, back and forth documenting all of that. So there, a lot of people you have, like, Natasha from TechnoChic, she made up all this stuff. There's, that's not Natasha, although I think she did model after herself. I often think of her as very geometric. Uh -huh. um, uh, but she made all that fun stuff up, uh, some of the, the cardboardy projects on there. Um, but yeah, backing the Kickstarter campaign helps a lot of different people out, not just us, because uh, yeah, we try to front load it with uh, all sorts of video, photography, projects, and whatnot on there. Not to mention, I mean, Pete and I, I mean, we're up here live streaming until our, our fingers are, are, are worked to the bone, which case we play the bone xylophone on them. It's a horrible sounding thing. It's so bad. It's just, it's so bad. Um, so on that fun note, Kickstarter campaign, check out the Crazy Circuits Bitboard at kickstarter.com or our own website because it's the same prices there, same reward, same shipping. Um, but these will ship the end of November, beginning of December. Look, we haven't gone down any. Hey. Woo! We probably will because right. <laughs> Kickstarter campaigns, they, people cancel towards the end or find something different. They are fantastic. Yeah. Natasha's a great, great designer. She puts together solid projects, documents them well. They look great. She just does a, uh, she's a fantastic maker person um and technochic.com she makes some very fun kits of her own there yeah. we actually went over uh it's the uh, the bow tie a lot of bow tie project she did a while yeah. back uh but yeah so she's actually documenting those up right now to go on our own website those bigger projects as well as instructables.com so i think we're gonna start posting those next week on instructables um there's the the piggy bank that its wings flap when you drop a coin in there there's the little robot person which is interactive and then there is a no-touch gumball dispenser, which is really cool. A little rocket ship, it looks like. And you put your hand underneath her, distance sensor triggers it, and it drops a gumball. 
and it looks really fantastic. So she's documenting all those guys up right now to put them up on on a couple of different spots. So yeah, those right here. They're oh, yep, on, there they are. are. On our Kickstarter page. Yep, at the it's very bottom. Um, so right good stuff. There. Hey, Andy, curriculum writer. Here's Andy. He's back Andy, there. I don't see any comment. Oh, he's over there. Oh, he's right there. Right see, it's okay. Andy. Yeah. Say hello, Andy. Hello, Andy. There you go. <laughs> Where's my rim? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Never give Pete, like, oh, a, a board to do sound effects you on. You specifically did that. I did. I bought him one. I was like, we should get this for you. It would be really helpful for the sound effects, and now I, I regret it every day. We can do this, too, though. <laughs> if I didn't do it, you would have made your own. You and I both That's know you, you would have made your own. It's true. That's it. Anyway, so anyway, to end things for the day, because we've yeah. got to go now populate our office area back there, I can see. Uh, Kickstarter campaign, totally, totally back us. We'd love it if you yeah. did. Uh, we've got these projects that are posted on our website and we'll continue to post more of them and if you're looking for some Halloween stuff uh, you know we have some Halloween paper circuit stuff I just every of your overlay now Pete this is just the more he prepares the more room he has to be a silly <laughs> silly Pete um, guess what Pete what is what is it what we're is, done okay we're done bye everybody oh, we'll be back tomorrow maybe I don't know we'll see if we get a new studio set up bye thanks for watching Please visit BrownDogGadgets.com for parts, projects, and curriculum. Follow us on social media at BrownDogGadgets. Check out our live streams at Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. We'll see you next time.